Hi guys, Liz Truss conducted another disaster of an interview with the media. Every time she speaks, she seems to make the situation worse and potentially spook the markets even more. Here she was with the BBC's Laura Koonsberg, where she tried to defend the elimination of the 45p tax rate. However, after a pretty pathetic attempt at excusing this action, she turned around and threw the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Kwasi Kwarteng, under a bus. Have a listen to this. So while you're here, one of the big, bold decisions that you have made as Prime Minister, which you have made a commitment on, is to scrap the top rate of tax. Now, there has been a lot of controversy around this policy. Some people in your party love it. Some people in your own party do not love it. Um, the opposition parties have decried it. There's been a lot of controversy around that decision. Are you absolutely committed to abolishing the 45 pence tax rate for the wealthiest people in the country? Yes. And it is part, Laura, it is part of an overall package mm -hmm. of making our tax system simpler and lower. What are you talking about? This was never the plan. The plan was to eliminate this tax rate, to stimulate the economy, to boost growth. There was nothing about making the tax system more simple. This is a pile of crap. Now, and Liz Truss knows this, but she's in a very desperate situation because she has realised that this was a very bad decision. It has put the economy in, into a tailspin and it's likely to end her career. But I think it's worth noting in the package we announced, the vast majority of that package is the energy package. And we've talked a lot about that. But it's I the to, energy to package, it's national insurance. The 45p rate actually raises very little and makes our tax system you know, more complicated. And we, we need to move away. We need to move away from the idea that everything is about how we re redistribute resources. We and there we have it. And there we have it the right-wing think tank speaking, and Liz Truss is their conduit. These organisations were set up and funded by opaque money to do a number of different things. To convince politicians, and they have the ear of the Prime Minister at the moment, to convince politicians that they should reduce the size of government. Government's function is just to funnel money to the private sector. It's there to uh, rewrite legislation to make it easier for businesses to run roughshod over the rights of workers, the, of consumers, the environment, protections for the environment, for example. So this is what Liz Truss is doing here. And when she talks about redistribution and you're getting away from that, she's speaking the language of these right-wing think tanks. They don't care about the poor. They don't care about working class people. They don't care about workers or the environment. They don't care about any of those things. It's about deregulating, allowing businesses to do whatever the hell they want and not to suffer any consequences and also to funnel money to these companies. We also need to make sure we have got a tax system that's competitive internationally and it's helping us bring in the investment, get people into work. And you, and you get but it's not bringing in investment. Why would anyone want to invest in a country that's run by these incompetent fools? But as we saw over the last number of years since Brexit, investment has dropped. And you're not presenting anything that's going to change that. Now, it's of course ironic that Liz Truss used to be a Remainer, although I, I doubt how much she actually believed in that. But get rid of Brexit and you would actually help stimulate the economy somewhat. But she's not planning to do that either. Get that people very clear wanting that the economy to get is going going as your priority. Ladder, you've you've made that, that very clear. Can I can I ask you, Prime Minister? Did you discuss scrapping the top rate with your whole cabinet? No. Do no, we think... didn't. It was a decision that um, the Chancellor made. Oh. Okay, and there we have it. Throwing the Chancellor under a bus. Now, Liz Truss. I don't believe for a second Liz Truss didn't know about this or it was a decision solely made by the Chancellor. Because she is his boss. She, he couldn't make a decision like this without her signing off on it. Th this was not just tweaking the tax rate or something. This was eliminating the, the higher rate of tax. And once again, we get back to these right-wing think tanks. They're the ones who are, 
who have been pushing this. And now Liz Truss realises, oops, we made a big mistake. And we need to do something about it. But if I try to undo it, well then, these people who are advising me, or maybe they're telling her, don't, no, no, don't undo it. Um, that's a very bad idea. You know, you're going to be out of office anyway. So let's get this through. I don't know what Liz Truss is getting out of this. This would be very interesting. It's a, a video for another day. But these, uh, the fact that she's throwing the, the chancellor under a bus here uh, demonstrates very poor leadership. She obviously should take responsibility for this. But she now realizes um, we've made a big mistake, but I'm not going to take responsibility for it, just like Boris Johnson didn't take responsibility for any of his actions. It was always somebody else's fault. Offloading responsibility onto others. It's the Tory way. And here we have Liz Truss offloading responsibility onto the Chancellor. Do you think that that is the right way to go about developing what has become a very controversial policy? You say it doesn't cost that much money, but it's a big decision, isn't it? If you'd well, been we, in Boris Johnson's we, cabinet and we, he had announced have, something like that without Laura, asking we you, have how would committed, you have felt? We have committed, and I committed during the leadership campaign, to make our system more competitive, to lower our taxes and to simplify our taxes. Look, once again, it's just a pile of crap here. It's not about simplifying taxes. It's about funneling money to people who don't actually need it and taking money away from people who do need it. Now, Liz Truss may be in a bit of bother because the, I, I think there's a split become appearing within the party. Um, Michael Gove, I don't have a lot of respect for Michael Gove, but Michael Gove speaks the truth here in this clip where, and you must remember that he backed Rishi Sunak for prime minister, but he says some pretty damning things here. Have a listen. But it is still the case, I think, that there is uh, an inadequate realisation at the top of government of the scale of change required. So, yes, the energy package was the most important thing in the fiscal event, but broadly 35% of the, uh, the m additional money that we're borrowing is not to cut energy costs. It is for unfunded tax cuts. And you unfunded tax cuts. There you have it. You know, who's saying this? Well, until recently, it was the media, it was the opposition parties, it was experts. They were saying these are unfunded tax cuts. Um, Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng wouldn't touch that phrase with a barge pole, but that's the reality. And now you have former cabinet minister Michael Gove saying this as well. This is pretty damning. Now, he goes on in the rest of the interview, there's no point saying, I leave a link if you want to see it yourself, but he goes on in the rest of the interview just to try and clarify somewhat. But towards the end, he just reinforces the same point again, that he doesn't agree with this. I think there are people within the Conservative Party who are positioning themselves to replace Truss. They realise she's messed up majorly, bigly, and... Uh, somebody needs to come in and clean up this mess. And, um, you know, it's it's just a matter of waiting for trust to crash and burn and then somebody else to take over. And um, I think certain members of the party are positioning themselves to either be the next leader or to support the next leader so that they can be in positions of power. Uh, don't assume that Michael Gove is some sort of hero here, here's someone who's speaking the truth because he cares about the truth. No, he obviously is somebody who realizes it's a disaster. I need to distance myself from that and we need to find someone to replace trust. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.